I'm talking to Cheryl Merriweather, principal at Gilroy College at Castle Hill. Um, Cheryl, I want to talk to you about 2020, your experience in leading a, a large secondary school in um, northwestern Sydney and how you coped and the leadership issues you dealt with during uh, the COVID period in 2020. Greg, I think that there are a few things that COVID reinforced for us. I don't think they, it actually taught us taught us that we had to be different and new, but it reinforced what was really important in leadership and what was really important to ensure that school communities kept going, especially large school communities like ours. So we, um, last year, I think the most important thing for us was community and connections. And that entailed every member of the community. So we looked at the importance of staff being acknowledged and staff feeling safe while they were putting together learning on a brand new platform in a brand new way. For students, we know how important peer-to-peer -peer connections for students are. Um, and I think COVID reinforced that for us, but also staff to student connections. I think COVID identified for us just how important teachers are to kids each day. And then to parents, making sure that parents had enough information. So from a leadership perspective, it was juggling all those threads and making sure that I could be supportive, that we had protocols, that we had safeguards in place so that everybody felt acknowledged, recognised and understood and that they weren't walking by themselves, that they weren't doing the journey alone. I actually that's think fun. that's the most important part. That, that word you use, um, connection, uh, you know, most of the principals have talked about connections as being so critical and not that they didn't have them, but you know, they're, 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 they were much more powerful. And in, in what way were they more powerful for you? Um, I think that it was um, with regard to staff, I think the connection that staff knew that the leadership team and I, especially in the lead up to um, the shutdown of COVID, we were meeting every day so that they had a framework that they could work within that they, they knew was going to enable them to deliver lessons at home. But I think it's a step further than that as well. We learned that flexibility has to come from leadership as well. So we, we actually engaged with parents and we engaged with teachers, which meant that after we started teaching um, online, we then changed the way the timetable ran so that, so that students had time to get up in between lessons. Because one of the things that the students were telling us was that it was really hard just in front of a screen all day. It was quite difficult. So we changed the timetable and, and we in leadership did that. So the staff didn't have to think about any of those day-to-day -day things. We provided them with what they needed to be able to go ahead so they could focus on their core work. Um, and I think that that's really, really important. The other thing is, I think that the connection comes from having confidence in your staff and ensuring that they know that, ensuring that they know that you as a leader have confidence that they can deliver curriculum in a totally different platform almost overnight. Um, and that was really difficult because I, I teach, so I had my HSC class last year, my extent, English Extension 1 HSC class, and I knew what it was like for me. So I could only imagine what it was like for staff with 30 year sevens who are really, they've started high school and they think that they're pretty old, but really they're still pretty young. Mm -hmm. And they needed staff to be able to have permission from themselves and know that we would back them when they needed to take 10 minutes out of the lesson to maintain the connection between the peer, peer to peer and staff and teachers to, to student. And I think that that's something that we take forward. The other thing that wow. we've actually changed because of COVID is the way we give information to parents. So our parents told us that they really like school bag, which we use, um, and they tend to read what goes on school bag because it's in chunks. So in your busy day, you can have a look. So we give much more of our information instead of just doing a traditional newsletter, 
we do letters home. So we try to carry forward all those connections. Um, well, you look back now and what did you learn about leading through that? I learned that it's really important to walk the talk. Not that I don't mm. always try and walk the talk, but it was even more important to walk the talk when you are dealing with parents, staff and students, often online, when we often didn't see them for, a, for well, we didn't see them in face to face for the entirety of the shutdown, um, to be able to talk to parents on the phone and allow them to have confidence that I would take forward their, their issues. Also to be able to be strong enough uh, to say that sometimes we don't get it right. Um, and we're, we're, we've always been very good at that, but I think I learned that that was so important. And going forward, I don't think that that needs to change. I actually don't think we change what we did in COVID because we're out of COVID. All those things that were important in 2020 remain important going forward. Um, you've used the word confidence once already and then um, Steph said, you know, you're not frightened, but you've, you've made mistakes. Um, it seems to me one of the central issues coming through here is the, the issue of trust. And, um, you know, trust at a basis of learning. Would, would that, I don't want to verbal you, but would that be what you... No, that would be exactly, actually, one of the things when I sat down to think about what I was going to say today, one of the, the, one of the, the phrases that I had there was flexibility, confidence and trust that those three things go together to create success, really, so that everybody, I think people, including leaders, need to feel valued. But I think it's really important as a leader that the people in your community know that they are valued. And sometimes that asks a lot of them because they have to trust what you say. Mm -hmm. They have to trust what you do. Yeah, ultimately, it's sort of a... a an act of faith, I suppose, leading, isn't it? <laughs> yes, leading leading's a big leap of faith, I think. I think sometimes you do it at a trot and a big jump, but I think also that leading is one of those things where you can't fudge it. You, you actually have to put the work in and you have to walk the journey with people and acknowledge that everyone's journey is different. I and love that. I love that you hear so many ways they describe you know, being authentic and all that. I love it. I'm going to use that. You can't fudge it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't pretend to be a leader and not actually do the work and, you know, take the joys and the sadnesses and the challenges and everything that goes with it. And I think that's something else that COVID taught us, that even though it was something that was so frightening in a lot of ways, the idea that we were turning things on its head overnight. Um, the joy that came out of that and the opportunities that came out of that, things that we now put into our everyday classroom, things that we, I put into my leadership that I probably don't even think about all that much anymore, that, that's really important, I think. Well, thanks very much, Cheryl. Thank you, Greg.